Joining us now all the way from the West Coast from La Jolla University, we are so excited to have Dr. Daniela Weisskopf. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you have a brand new paper out published in Science about the protective immunity against COVID-19 for survivors. So explain this research and, and what did you find? Yeah, so basically um, we were interested in like after an infection with SARS-CoV-2, how long will you have immunity against this virus? So how long can we measure uh, the immune responses that are still present against this virus? And that's important because if the immune response wanes after a couple of months, then you don't have any protection anymore. The immune system works based on memory. So it can always like form like, you know, specific cells antibodies and form a memory against pathogens it has previously accounted. So we were interested in like how long is this immune memory present. So that's what we were doing. We were following samples from people that have been infected like six to eight months ago and that's basically as far out we have been able to go so far because nobody has been infected like you know 12 months ago. So we were asking the question is the immune system still recognizing this virus and yes if which part of the immune system so there is certain um, different as um, aspects of the immune system so you can recognize antibodies you can have cd4 or cd8 t cells t cells are cellular components that help you protect against reinfection so we were interested in all of these ones so that's just to get a good overview because if you only measure antibodies you're kind of ignoring half of the adaptive immune system. So that's why we were interested in all of these arms of the immune system, because it's important to know um, for all of these um, um, parts of the system, which still can remember the virus. And it seems as if the, the vaccines are focusing on antibodies and maybe to just simplify things, but should we also, should the public also know that there are other things within the immune system that are also helping uh, protect COVID-19 survivors? So the immune system um, has all of these different parts and the vaccine induces all of these different parts. But you're correct in saying that typically only antibodies are measured and that is because it's the easiest. Because you, an antibody is a protein so you can easily isolate it and measure it if it's still present. The cellular component of the immune system, you need to isolate blood, you need to like keep the cells alive and then measure the function. So it's a lot more difficult to do. That's why a lot of um, labs and companies don't do that. But that doesn't mean that the vaccine does not induce the, all of these arms of the immune system. It's just measured. So having these studies that will help you how they are related, these different parts of the immune system will also help um, shed light on this. If antibodies are a good correlate of protection or if you need to measure actually other parts. So. And can you explain how these other measures compare to antibodies? They have a different role. Yeah, absolutely. So antibodies are typically um, produced um, by cells and then are released. And as I said, they are proteins that um, recognize the whole virus when it's circulating through you and then they can neutralize it. So, but once the virus is inside your cell, antibody cannot recognize it anymore. So that's when you need the other arms of the immune system because they can very well um, recognize infected cells and then eliminate, eliminate those. So. And the number, um, speaking to the number of the amount of, or, or we're seeing that people have immunity to eight months. And is this the number of the amount of antibodies, the number of the amount of the killer T cells and, or the potency of them or, or both, which makes you sort of project that this could be even years. Right. So what we have been measured is like the presence of these different arms of the immune system. What we don't know yet, which arm has what role in protection and, um, and, and all other stuff. But it is important to show that you actually do have uh, still memory eight to eight months after infection because that is a prerequisite that you can even then protect against a potential um, um, reinfection with this virus. So what we have been seeing is that all of these different arms of the immune system that we have been um, analyzing is that they all um, um, have different kinetics. So antibodies wane over time, but you still have detectable antibodies after eight months. Um, T cells, um, you can still have in the majority of people, you have still um, 
um, detectable uh, responses after eight months. And a very interesting fact is that there is um, a type of cells that actually makes these antibodies, and that is called a B cell. And they actually increased over time. So you actually have more of these B cells that actually then are able to very quickly deploy antibodies when you be reinfected. So it's important to look at all of these um, components together. And we found that in the majority of people, almost over 90% that you have, that everybody has at least three of these arms still fully like functioning. So it's, it's um, good news, I would say for the, <laughs> for all of us. In terms of the rollout and the phases of which the vaccine will be distributed, do you, do you think that people who've been infected and are recovering, given this immunity, uh, should go to maybe the back of the line? And couldn't, if they get the vaccine, be sort of an immunity overload? There could be dangers to that. So basically, um, if you have been infected, then you will need to know like if you still have this immunity present, right? So because we saw in our study very um, clearly that there is about 10% of the people that do not have immune responses, memory response after eight months. So it's going to be difficult to find out what part um, you fall in, right? So you have been infected, do you, are you in the 90% or are you in the 10%? So I think it's always better that you get the vaccine no matter what. And uh, there is no concern in being an immunity overload. The immune system deals with a lot of pathogens like, you know, every day and uh, it's fine just doing that. So I would think that you would still um, get vaccinated even if you have been exposed. And that is because it's impossible to find out what group you fall in um, if you still have this immunity or not. So that would be my recommendation. So even if we, we have these antibodies that are still in our system, we, should, we are pro-vaccine, we should go and get it go out and get it. Yeah, that's what I would uh, suggest. Mm -hmm. And last 30 seconds, you have the floor. Can you repeat the question? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, last 30 seconds here, what would you like to say? You have the floor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I've just um, um, wanted to like mention that we are of course gonna following up the exact same study out for longer times and we will actually look at what does this look like once you have been vaccinated because it would be interesting to see if this is the same or different or like, you know, follows different or might work even better than natural infection. So that's something we will follow up and we will also follow up like what happens after 12 months, after 18 months, just to get a really good idea um, and have solid data on to answer these questions that everybody has right now. Like how long are we protected? Well, Dr. Weisskopf, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your contribution to science and we look forward to having you back. And learning about this research that you have moving forward. Thank you so much for your interest, thank you.